This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 626, Tuesdays. We've been celebrating professional wrestling. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron here in on the Twitter, in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're here to talk wrestling with you guys and all of our friends from all across the country joining us on Facebook Live right now on the Wrestling Mayhem Show page. But with me, joining me on the couch is Larry. What's up? Larry has uh, ascended from the basement. Yes. And uh, where he's been making weird smells. Oh, that was the spray paint. That was the spray paint. Just yeah, to clarify. Yeah, yeah. just to it, clarify. It was spray paint. Yeah, a little extra bonus uh, from the neighbor. Um, Sorry. And, yeah, yeah, you know, you know. And also with us, this is the first time on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, but he's joining us lately over on the uh, Raw Wrap-Up from uh, week to week here. Uh, it is Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Give you a plug there while we're at it. Oh. Always appreciate it. Always appreciate it. So first time, so much, Lord. first time having you on, and I'm really, really worried about getting to that slice on Broadway ad. But we'll get to that because you know oh, yeah. Dave's history with doors and kicking. We do. So. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we do have a special guest with us tonight. He's uh, joining us. I didn't even catch what part of the country you're coming to us from. I'm pretty sure it's out there on the East Coast, right? Beautiful Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. I was in Stanford today. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we got another interesting connection to Stanford. Unfortunately, he's not on the show this week. Todd Jershell. He is the director of operations up with Phil Singer Games. And we have been a Hello. long time since we talked to somebody from over there. Glad you could join us. Oh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. You guys got some cool things going on. I want to get we'll get deep into it here um, um coming up. But you guys are coming to town this weekend. Uh, uh tell us like super quick. And I say we'll get deeper into the show about it. Uh, but you guys are coming for Galacticon this week. Is that right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're invading the Steel City this weekend, uh, coming for our 29th annual summer convention uh, called Galacticon. So it's a weekend of uh, gameplay um, and all sorts of other fun things. Uh, uh, and, you know, meet Tom Filsinger himself. We have all of our new game releases and lots of fun. Should be awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait to get deep in that and check out what you guys are doing this weekend. But in the meantime, please uh, check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can subscribe and check out past interviews, including when, when we talked to Mr. Phil Singer himself uh, back in April of 2013 on this very show, apparently, we were looking up uh, and uh, uh, talking about how things were going there. And, of course, they've blown up so much since that discussion we had back in 2013, of course. Uh, but you can also please uh, check out the show and email us at that email address. Good times. Good times, Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Drink, drink some more caffeine yes, over there. Yes. I forgot uh, which one or we, that. I didn't know if we were going to woo or do that. Or that. No, no, the woo comes <laughs> yeah, later. I know. The woo no, comes later. Okay, now you got the we're order. Good. All right. Uh, or 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. And also at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group where we have a lot of great conversation. The Mayhem Nation is a very live and loud over there. Also, thanks to our streaming partner, the 405 media.com uh where they're streaming us every evening at 9 p.m pacific time midnight eastern so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem and of course we're here every tuesday at 9 p.m eastern except programming note in two weeks we will not be here at 9 p.m 9 p.m eastern on tuesday uh, well actually we did pre-record a special episode with uh mad mike and shirley doe uh, who both have survived reviewing Impact Wrestling for several years. So we uh, brought them back <laughs> for Impact Therapy 2 uh, to have another discussion there. Weirdly, we went on some tangents. We actually talked about, I think, horror movies for a little bit at the end there, too. So it, it got, I mean, as this show does, it's not like... Well, we, you need something to lighten the mood. You do, yeah. So let's talk about horror movies. Yes. Uh, it, it's exactly the kind of thing. And, and of course, it's always a fun time again, Shirley Doe on the show. 
uh, as well. So a good, good discussion with him and Mad Mike. Um, <laughs> they didn't entirely lose their minds uh, uh, last time. First time he did it, he said this was a very cathartic, cathartic experience for him. So uh, it's, it's pretty good. That'll be up in a couple of weeks. And you can find it out there in the uh, uh, live feeds as well uh, if you want to peek at that. Uh, a little bit early. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, supporting us at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. And of course, at the fan of the show, $1 level, our friends, Bo Diggity! Woo! You got the woo! Got Good one. job, Larry! Uh, as well as Ed Burke, Bobby F., J Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. And at the Pocky Club, $5 level, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Heel, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Potter. Dave Potter, I have to apologize because we didn't realize that you didn't, like, you've been actually submitting for a few weeks now, and, and then we did not add you to the list on the, on the show. So apologize well, for that. No, no, no problem. I, I almost wanted to say something, but it was like, e- well, I, I want to make sure that you're getting the money I'm giving you, but I didn't want to <laughs> sound like, hey, buddy, you know, it's almost like, hey, do you know that gift I gave you? Hey, <laughs> did you notice that at all? Well, we noticed, and now I'm just going to say it extra loud for a few weeks just to make sure you get your money's worth and I give you extra plugs for the Tiny Shutter Podcast on iTunes, Podcaster, wherever you get podcasts in uh, yeah. one of the podcasts about iPhone photography. That's exactly. The place. See, there you go. I'm giving you your money's there worth. Go. There you go. There we go. Extra stuff. I'm going to try to fit that in here in the next couple of weeks. And also at the PC Club, $10 level, Billy Johnson and J.D. Jones. Billy Johnson winning the... Uh, blockers that I screwed up poster and the uh, Tomb Raider make good poster. Uh, we're going to be seeing him this weekend in IWC and uh, hand those off to him. This month, if you submit to Patreon, we have this wonderful, I swear I'm not going to screw this one up and put it next to the hot window during summer. Uh, there is The Rock and George for his nice upside down rampage poster that's all yours. And we, uh, we take everybody that's uh, submitted for the month by the end of uh, July and uh, at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and we put you into a patreon rumble i'm considering doing it (laughs) slightly differently maybe rewarding you guys in a different way uh to make sure it's fair and some more people get a chance uh to check it out or uh, to get a chance to to win the poster so as i'm uh just stalling as i'm trying to roll this poster up (laughs) so i don't ruin it here live on the internet right now no problem here. Uh, also, uh, thank you to everyone again. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. So let's get into the show. This is the part where Larry is going to tune out because Extreme Rules is this weekend. Ooh, I, we, although, you, although you'll although you be there. You'll be around. I'll be around. You'll be around. Um, th- There was a recent development for Extreme Rules. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Billy, breaking news. Breaking, breaking news. news. Uh, Billy Johnson just said Ellsworth's. Ellsworth will be in a shark cage on Sunday. Oh, no. So we have that to look forward to. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, You know what? We got a cage match, a shark cage, a... And I'm I pretty sure it. anybody that's met him on his recent indie wrestling uh, run will appreciate seeing him stuck in the shark cage. I'm but you know saying, the problem just... is with the shark cage, Sorg. <laughs> What's the problem with shark cage? He has no chin, so he can slide through the bars easier. Oh, no. Oh. oh. He's like. he's Logistical like Logistical errors. He's like, like Enzo. Like Enzo. We do not name him. He, 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 he who, who shall not, not be named. He name, whose hair is in the drawer to be forgotten uh, <laughs> and never shown. And we've hidden all the pictures. No, I haven't hidden all the pictures, unfortunately, on the internet of everybody wearing the Enzo hair. Uh, but uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ellsworth, um, so you're saying it's kind of like that scene from like the first X-Men movie, like when that guy gets powers, but he turns into jellyfish and he just like goes through the bars. Yeah, and then Ellsworth. he turns into a puddle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Ellsworth puddle, is that your prediction for Extreme Rules? Yep. Awesome. They're there you go. And there's our first They're, prediction. Oscar's gonna mop him up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even interested in in because I, I really enjoyed, even though it was just kind of a runaway thing. I enjoyed Oscar and him last week on SmackDown, and and uh, it was this week on SmackDown. Well, yeah, it was both weeks on SmackDown. Both. Oh, but it was. I think it was a lumberjack jack match for this week. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. that would have been good. Yeah, yeah. Too bad you got rid of the network, huh? <laughs> well, it's on USA. Yeah, but... it is on USA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we kept saying that last night about Rob. I don't know. It, 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 that didn't it, even apply. It, it, I that's true. There you go. Um, but no. But so so other. So th- there's the first match: Carmella and Oscar. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, sorry, sorry. But I'm ahead. glad they're getting their money out of the shark cage, since this is what the 
third match on a pay per view in the last year or so. Yeah, uh, the NXT one, yeah. yeah, yeah, the NXT one with the Paul Ellering with Paul Ellering in there. Um, Enzo, then the the Enzo one, Enzo, and there was then another this one. one, wasn't there? In, in, not wasn't in Jericho one? in one? Jericho, oh Jericho, Jericho. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, so right. this is the fourth one in a year. Hey one. man, go check Mattel's website. Is there a new Shark Cage set coming out? <laughs> <laughs> because that's what happened last time. Because the one, that's right. One, but, yeah. And I don't know if, if when they had the one that was like the crane that was set up, it looked like one side of Ultimate X uh, on one side of the ring during NXT. Like the toy looked just like that when they yeah. put it out there. So like you got to check the Mitchell website. This is Larry. This is synergy. What? This is synergy. You put the thing on the show and you sell the toy of it like Elimination Chamber. There's a reason. <laughs> I'm gonna break that cage. You gonna break that cage? <laughs> Anyways, um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Any other thoughts on this uh, Oscar and Carmella thing? I, it's a fun thing. I don't expect like much of a classic That's match fine. out of no. this, right? No, no, no. no Carmella. I think Carmella wins. Mm-hmm. I think Carmella wins. So, yeah. I, the one thing now is there other than the Raw match where we're gonna have. Um, Ronda in the front row. Is there another women's match announced for this pay per view? Uh, just the two. Uh, no, I think it's just the two title matches. Yeah, the yeah. two title matches. We're because not... that that little teaser Becky Lynch had, where she's tagging with Nikki Cross. Mm-hmm. That that was on, a house show. That was house show. But yeah. is she that, on SmackDown? That excites me. And I think she just was at a house show in general. Yeah. Like a lot, a lot of times they'll cycle in NXT. Oh, really? Those, okay. Yeah. Or, or, or vice versa, you know? So, hmm. you know, absolutely. So, hey, because that preview. would be, that would be a good tag team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be a really good tag a little team. Bit of preview. Maybe they're trying it out for SmackDown down the road, you know, but, um, be interested to see these around. Uh, I did see, Excuse me. I did see earlier that um, um, I was informed, and here it is: the New Day is going to battle Sanity, Sanity in a tables match for the kickoff show. Why? Okay. Are they feuding? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Sounds I, good. I go back to WLC was the best ever kickoff show pre-show ever. So oh, I mean, getting these this these three these six guys together on a tables match. Like I think that's gonna be fun to watch. Killian oh, yeah. Dane yeah, and Big E in a tables match. I mean, I hate to say it, but with the new four-hour show format, though, mm-hmm. I mean, couldn't we just put them on the main show? I mean, they they got four hours. Four, <laughs> what four else? hours plus sometimes. What else is on the main yeah. card? Yeah, exactly. But they have ten matches on the main card, though. Oh, jeez, ten it, matches. Oh, I forgot. I'm looking at the look at the Wikipedia. It's ten oh matches. Plus. So yeah, we're gonna get. So this is so. Oh. So a lot of us here on the show are gonna be at Extreme Rules. We're gonna see firsthand a four-hour pay-per-view that's <laughs> not a Survivor Series or SummerSlam even. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> I'm not showing that it, on the it, air. It, like, it's not, not gonna be pretty Monday morning. Yeah, yes. Okay. Everybody, everybody's gonna have a tough Monday morning here in the Steel City. Uh-huh. But uh, especially some people that may be involved with other things around the show. Uh, so, um, man, man. But anyways, uh, what else is happening on the show? We do get a steel cage match with uh, Strowman and Owens. I think that is gonna be very entertaining. That'd be fun. Yeah. Be, and, and makes it's been it's been the most fun lead up we've had. Whereas Roman and, and Lashley is probably the most boring until we had a pull apart this this week, um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm you mean Roman and Bob? What did I say? Roman and Bob. Roman and Bob. Roman Bob. and Bob. He is not Lashley. He is not Bobby Lashley. He is just Bob. So Bob, I forgot who he was talking about, and I thought Bob Holly was back. <laughs> yeah, I would go for that. that I'd be good. all for that. <laughs> and you know what? No, never mind. Never mind. Hmm. Oh, I forgot. That can't happen. What? Can, no, just continue. Okay. Is it something about Crash Holly? Yeah. 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 That's what I, 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 I forgot that that's not an option. Can't put him in a shark cage either. Um, anyways, <laughs> moving on. Uh, let's see what else we got on this show. We got um, the, the match that either is going to be the most amazing or most overlooked match going into this. Uh, by, uh, you know, I, I feel, I, I don't know. I feel like this is going to go sideways. AJ Styles and Rusev. Last time they were in Pittsburgh, 
Rusev was cheered so hard in the dark match that he joined the face team in the halfway through the match. <laughs> I recall. And then the referee ended up like super kicking people and getting the pin and AJ turned into a referee. That's so, how I, I mean, think this match is going to go. You think that's it? You, you think? Yeah. I think uh, it's going to end with the Charles, referee. Charles his... Robinson is going to be the new WWE champion. Oh, is that That's it? how it's going to end. <laughs> um, not even an extreme rules match or anything. So, um, you know, what, what, piss, what would piss you off more than going to an extreme rules pay-per-view and seeing somebody uh, uh, win by, by disqualification? That would be hilarious. That would be horrible. That would be so funny. Um, it would be just as outrageous as, well, not just as outrageous, but a few steps below Ellsworth winning the women's money in the bank. I match. would love to see Rusev take this just as a, let's just do this and see what happens. Oh, yeah. It's not going to happen. I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. No, not I'm, I'm happen. with you, Todd. No way. No. But you I mean, wanted to. They put oh. it on gender. They did put it on Tinder. Maybe they the, did put it on. They Tinder. might be starting a new market in Bulgaria. There you go. Okay. <laughs> that might be the new hot Bulgaria bag. tour coming up. Jeez. But you know what though? I mean, they they teased Shinsuke for so long, mm-hmm. and just didn't even get close to giving him the title. And then all of a sudden, oh, I, I can almost see. Oh, you guys wanted Nakamura, huh? Huh? You wanted Nakamura? Well, we'll give you this other guy. How about that? Ha, yeah, ha, ha, yeah, yeah. But Nakamura's getting Jeff Hardy for the IC belt. Yeah. Who yeah. is Joe facing? Joe is He's not on the show. To be no. That is a travesty, too. Yeah. How is the biggest heel in WWE not on the pay-per-view? And the guy that was threatening AJ Styles is he a few injured? weeks ago. I, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe he is again, which would be uh. a damn shame. But that's that's... I'm throwing water bottles. You're throwing water bottles all over the place. You're, that's how mad you are over it, there about that? Yeah. Jeez. I'm perturbed. Jeez. Perturbed. <laughs> yeah. Um, there so, you, I mean, do, do we think Shinsuke is going to get the IC belt since he didn't get the the heavyweight title? It feels like a consolation prize for him. It seems like it, right? Mm-hmm. Don't give him the yeah. big one yet because I feel like they're, they're, they're less likely to, right? Um, you can't... I mean... I, I feel Were like, they saving it for WrestleMania next year? It could be. This could run to WrestleMania next year. It seriously could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's June Joe already. is injured. Billy Billy Johnson saying that Joe is injured. What so. happened to Joe? Oh, Billy. Geez. Well, Shinsuke was injured too. That's why he hasn't shown up. No, the last he couple got weeks bit by show. a dog. Oh, he got bit by. Yeah, yeah. he got bit by a uh, police dog in the, during the house show. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> that's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah, he got bit by yeah, a police dog. That's what happened. Yeah, during the police show, d- during a house show. You can't, mm-hmm. even, you can't even make that up. Jeez. Okay. Oof. Um, I'm sorry. U.S. title belt. Is that right? Yeah, it is a U.S. The title US, belt. US. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. U.S. title belt with That's Shinsuke. That's the 60 minute. Yeah. The, the Inter- IC is the, is Inter- the 30 yes. minute. Intercontinental is Dolphin, Seth. Drew McIntyre will be at ringside after that. Good match again and Raw last night. I bet that'll open. Mm-hmm. You think that opens? Yeah. I can see it. I, could, I think that's going to open. Because, man, if they drop that in the middle of the show... Oof. You have ten matches, and at least one of them is going to be a half an hour. Yes. Jeez. <laughs> oh, like, let's let's, I, let's I, do I, the math on this. Are there tag matches? Yes. Who's where are the tag get, matches? Well, there's a six man tag that we're just talking about. You got Team Hell No and the not the Basham Brothers. The the, uh, the they are the Basham Brothers. The, we're calling them. Um, the yep, Basham yes, Brothers. the Basham Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Luke Harper we'll and the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we, and we got another tag team title match too. Mm-hmm. We do. We have um uh, uh the B team against uh, uh Hardy and and the Wyatts, really? which has been a pretty fun build that seemed a little longer than I expected it to. Do we, do either of those yeah. have stipulations? No, no, I don't believe they one. do. Nope. nope, nope. Listen, your yeah. stipulations are a kickoff show tables match, a cage match, a thirty man or. Damn it! Thirty minute Iron Man match. That's not an extreme, extreme rules match. No, but the cage is, is the women's title is extreme rules. Oh, the women's title is yeah. Um, um, raw, raw, raw. The raw yeah. Bliss yeah, and uh, Nia Jax, but also that's extreme rules. And Ronda Rousey promises to be ringside mm-hmm. to promote her pre order for WB Two K. There you go. There you go. There you go. It all comes together. See, see, Larry, synergy. No, 
No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what else am I missing from this one, guys? I think that's all the matches. Uh, right? Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Finn for some and Baron Corbin. Because because some because they because they the guy get Baron to... Corbin and his you know uh, bartender outfit on the on the show. <laughs> well, it's improved. Remember the first week he came out and it's definitely not the right material, and he just sweated through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, corporate Baron. Anyways, uh, at least at least he got a hair, nice haircut though. So yeah. I'm looking at this. This is this is a WWE card with tons of potential. I'm happy it's here in Pittsburgh. They seem to be making a big deal of it here in Pittsburgh. I am sad for a couple of reasons. One, Pittsburgh's own Elias is not on this card. Mm. Officially. Uh, I, th- I, he, he I do think something. He, I think he's going to pop up. It's a four-hour show. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the intermission show, uh, halftime show. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the intermission to the Iron Man match. <laughs> Wait, no. He right was just doing something. Before or during? Who did he just have a ma- uh, tag match with yesterday? <laughs> All of <laughs> uh, with uh, with Baron against uh, Rude and there, he's kind of had a uh, mini feud with with Bobby Rude on Raw the last few weeks. So, but I can't see that kind of coming ahead unless they do it kind of there. Yeah. But I mean, but you have Corey Graves, the hometown boy, making a big deal. You know, it seems like they're talking about Pittsburgh a little bit more than they usually do uh, mm-hmm. when they're talking about the towns, or maybe I just hear it more because they're saying like town's name. On, on the show, but uh, you have no. Kurt Angle, you have Elias, you have a lot of Pittsburgh representation there. You know, I can't imagine them not doing something with this. Well, yeah. I mean, Corey did talk about if when Rusev wins, there's going to be a parade down Carson Street. Yeah, yeah. Then he named so, like Polish Hill and a bunch of other neighborhoods to yeah. make everybody in Pittsburgh pop. Are <laughs> Bailey and Sasha doing anything? No, because nope. they're going to get resolved next week on Raw. The result of their therapy. What? Oh, mm-hmm. joy. Mm-hmm. If they didn't bring Sasha out in Boston, they're in not going to bring her out Boston. in Boston. They're they're doing results of their therapy session. Yes. Yeah. They're going to have Mari? to report their results. Yes. They're going to do a Mari Povich segment oh with Kurt Angle yeah. Monday on Raw, not at the pay-per-view. Well, I'll tell you what I'll be doing Sunday night. Watching New Japan? I'm going to be watching the first... <laughs> uh, Match of the G1 tournament. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to be doing that while at Extreme Rules. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care who sees it. I, I hope somebody sees that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. And I'm going to be like commentating on it and everything. Like, yeah. I don't think we can say much more about what you're doing, but... Uh... <laughs> But anyway, so Extreme Rules oh is God. this. Uh, if you're in the area, sorry, we will not be having a pay-per-view party since uh, the majority of us will be down there uh, at the pay-per-view from the sounds of it. Uh, I've been trying to think about some meetup things, so I don't know. Keep an eye on the social media. I might announce something here a little bit before, so just don't be surprised if there might be something for you guys to do here in town. Uh, you know, maybe a few hours before. We'll see. See what happens. So, yeah, it might be an awesome cast recording by, by the sounds of it. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what that's going to be. Matt Carlin said Corey Graves promised Rollins Permanis. Oh. So visit your local Permanis. You might run into Seth go. Rollins. There you go. I, I would say. So here's a question. Does Graves take him to the one on the south side or the one in the strip? I think the strip district. You're saying the strip district is a Sunday night. Yeah. It's closer. Yeah. Yeah, it's the one from the Rick Seaback yeah. special. We're getting super. Hey, remember the pre-show when we were talking about getting around Pittsburgh uh, show? <laughs> Welcome to the which pram manis are you eating at? Uh, but anyways, I'm at the one that sort? serves one pizza. last thing. Well, yeah, what's if, that? We do, if we do get an Elias concert, what yeah. are the chances of having a conga line interruption? <gasps> yes. That's a good <laughs> idea. I like that one. Didn't but, they do that already on a Raw? They did. I'm sure but, they did. I'm sure yeah, they did. because they had Bobby Roode come out and do the be in the conga line. I have a follow up from an uh, expert of uh, the night establishers, uh, Billy Johnson. It says uh, the strip because the South Side closes earlier. There you go. Now you know the rest of the story. Uh, speaking of good eats that are local here to Pittsburgh, I want to give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza. Slice on Broadway.com, the OG, the original, right on the, up the street here. Uh, from our studio in the Beachview neighborhood, right along the tracks here. The last place, uh, hey, with a fully functioning streetcar line. Hey, sorry about that library line. Okay, we're getting super local again. <laughs> also over Carnegie, PNC Park, and the East End, 
as Dave Podner is very familiar with. Check them out. Thank you so much for them support. And Dave, we have to say, please do not kick the door down, but let them know the Mayhem Show sent you. Dave. Yes. I, I, I will be very polite and gently... With my foot, gently your foot. open the door. Uh, gently. Give them a plug for that. I know it's glass. I will be gentle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give them a plug. And for that, nice I give... people. Nice yes. people with great pizza. Be that very nice and gentle with them. That was good. Dave Podner of the Tiny po- <laughs> Tiny Shutter Podcast. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Slice on Broadway. Thanks so much for supporting <laughs> professional wrestling and chatting with you guys as well when we roll in there. Thanks, guys. Uh, anyways, we got some non WWE stuff to discuss. Um, one with a little bit of a local connection, but first of all, the the thing I think most people have been just rabid over this weekend is not WWE stuff, but New Japan. And I don't know if as you, they should be. You guys here remotely have you guys watching on the New Japan? I'm sure you've seen the news of what happened from there, right? Yeah, I saw I yeah. saw news and highlights, but I have not really seen full matches. Yeah, you too, Todd. Uh, uh yeah, I kind of I. What kind of fast forwarded through and kind of caught the highlights of it. Good news is that Larry and I sat here Sunday night and watched the whole damn thing. Uh, so, and did not know some of the stuff that happened going into it. Nope. So, though we had some genuine uh, responses, especially if you were following uh, the Mayhem Show Twitter on Sunday. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. I, I was just seeing other comments. Some of the. Um, the, I'm, not, I'm not getting that about the conga line on Elias. Uh, that's just for their chat room. But anyways, um, so great show. Yeah. In San Francisco. Yep. Not too far from where producer Missy was, even though she didn't go uh, over the weekend. Shame. 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 Your dad would have loved it. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, it was a great show. It's what you expect from New Japan, I think, even more so. You know, I mean, it was. I mean, it's, I think it's what you expect from one of their dome shows. To be quite it was, honest, it was a little tamer than Dominion. A or, little tamer. Or Tokyo. Wait, a little tamer. Well, no, I'm just saying, like the lead up, the lead up to like the upper card was. Oh, okay. The like, not everybody was going balls out mm-hmm. like they did on like Dominion or Wrestle Kingdom. So two controversies have come out of this. One including good old Jr. Oh my God! Let's talk about that first. Um, <laughs> and the other one, in, uh, and the other one involving somebody who's been on our our Indie Mayhem show program as well, um, a little bit. Uh, so, so we had uh, Juice and I kind of call him Johnny Switchblade, but that's a low, local Jay wrestler, Jay White Switchblade, Jay, Jay White. Yeah. Um, <laughs> U.S. U.S. Championship for the U.S. Right. Championship, which was established last year when they came to America and had a G1 tournament. Yeah. They're hitting the guardrails. They're getting crazy already. Jr. saying something about they, like, you know, they gotta keep the officials gotta keep this under control. They completely took out the timekeeper stable through yes. a guardrail rail at yes. the beginning of the match, the very yes. beginning of the match. Some stuff into the crowd. They hit two, like took out two tables. It was, it was pretty crazy. It was yeah. pretty crazy. They got one. And I was reading a report. Apparently, the guardrail they hit by the announce table. They had not properly latched the gu- the gate. No so shit. So when they hit it, it, there was a chain reaction event where it hit the table, which knocked over Jr. Jr. fell on his. He fell backwards. The report is he's suffering from uh, a lung injury and perhaps a broken rib. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. If somebody from his age, his age, Thanks. and having uh, uh, the elements that he's had to deal with. Holy shit! You know what? Good for him being able to call the rest of that show. Absolutely, especially. and especially especially the main event. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, he so, <laughs> so he does that, and Josh Barnett, and and uh, thankfully, right before this, I happen to be like like I need to see what this J- Josh Barnett guy is about, and I realized and he's one of those MMA guys that uh, Mad Mike was bitching about in Impact Wrestling, b- fighting Bobby Lashley. Just, just to specify, but, he he's he was in the heavyweight division in UFC. Right, right. He is but, a giant of a man. Yes, he's huge, huge, and and has history with New Japan. Has yeah. the connection here? It makes sense. And we've been talking about his his kind of performance with Jr. on the weekly show on Access. Mm-hmm. A lot different when he's at an event for sure. You can tell it on a yeah. studio. He's got a whole different vibe. You know, I it was really cool to hear that, you know, because I've been kind of lackluster on him watching the Access show, especially next to JR, because shit, like, <laughs> it's hard to look good next to JR in general, right? So, so JR gets knocked over, 
And uh, Barnett says, you done fucked up now, right on the mic. <laughs> which is funny, because I'm pretty sure this is streaming live on Access. Oh, yeah. When they did this. So I'm sure somebody was on a button or something. Or I, I want to I want to rewatch this on Access. On Access. Just when, to yeah, see yeah. It should be that. available. I bet they cut it soon. out. I, well, yeah, this could be on the button, or maybe it's Access, and they just don't yeah, give a shit. Maybe. Right? Because... Because I'm pretty sure. the latter. <laughs> yeah, probably. I, I'm going with that. You know, Mark Cuban don't give no shits. Well, uh, I know they censor they censor swearing they on do. that show. Okay. So. Okay, but anyway, oh yeah, the, the juice promo. I remember that yeah. because I watched it. Yep. I watched it before and after that, and I'm just like, oh, um, uh, when he did the broken hand thing yeah. and and the e- best promo e- of the Eagles year. shooting out of his ass. Yeah, it the is best promo, promo absolutely of the year. promo of the year. Um, but it, and then Josh goes after Jay White. Yeah, he, in during the middle of the match, in he the runs the match. into the ring to mm-hmm. go after Jay White. Yeah, it got real. It got real. <laughs> uh, we're pretty sure it got real. Um, um Matt Carlin, so we ended up breaking down into a New Japan discussion on the Raw wrap up last night, and uh, he was just like, I don't know what's real anymore. Uh, he says uh, in the chat earlier, uh, just this evening, uh, that Juice Switchblade match left me totally speechless. Um, yeah. It was a great match on top of things, right? Yeah, but, it was a really good match. But you do not fuck with JR, especially when he's being flanked by an actual MMA guy. Uh, and a very good MMA guy, I believe, too. But you know what? Jay White handled it perfectly. Yeah. He he was, like, everyone hated him mm-hmm. after that. He just worked it. He's the most hated guy in New Japan right Oh, now. absolutely. He might be the most hated guy in pro wrestling after messing with JR. Yeah, he might never work again. Yeah. <laughs> No. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. There's plenty of people who have done some shitty things in indie wrestling or in pro wrestling that are still getting indie bookings so, or impact wrestling bookings. But anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know. Uh, you guys, of course, I'm sure saw the stories and clips of that. What, what were your impressions of, of what happened there with, uh, with uh, good old JR, Jim Ross? To be honest, I mean, uh, when Coach mentioned during Raw, mm-hmm. you know, our, our favorite coach saying, oh, he went on the outside. Oh, he could have gotten crack rib. I hear they're going around these days. Oh, shit. Oh, no. I didn't hear that. And, no. Yes. Yes. And then someone mentioned, uh, apparently a whole bunch of people added add, added JR on Twitter and said, oh, Coach made a digger. He said, JR was like, Whatever he can do, whatever he wants, and you know, no skin off the of JR. I don't like, think it's a dig at JR. I think it's a dig on the situation. Yeah. Well, you know. if it if it came from Vince, yeah, which pretty much something like that sounds like a Vince thing in general. I don't know. Yeah, I could see it being a dig at JR. That's yeah, true. That's true. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have that, but I, like when when you hear people say, "Oh, it's a work," like JR is sixty five year old man. Mm-hmm. Who, with the bell palsy and everything else? No, no, I cannot see. It's an accident. Yes, it's an accident. And hopefully, I mean, when Jr. and Emily, I understand wrestling Twitter, everything possibly could be a work. But when he tweeted out, he couldn't get his uh, bag in the overhead compartment because he couldn't lift his arms up because of the ribs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's like I, I said, it's a bad accident. It happens, and hopefully, he'll recover from your, it. Your announcer should not leave a wrestling show with injuries. I'm inter- I'm interested no. to hear his podcast tomorrow. Oh, his podcast! I, I there there's there's a small fire. part. Of, there's this <laughs> small part of my mind that thinks this entire thing was a work just to get his podcast over. <laughs> well, you, well, and not the the hundred times he mentions his podcast no. and his barbecue no. sauce and his uh, personal appearances on the show. Jr. Getting like. Breaking a rib during a G1 special will make people want to listen to that That's podcast true. True. ten times do, more. I, I kind of just myself. to hear the intro and just to hear him bitch about Jr. I don't like his podcast. Like, I, I love it, Jr., but I don't like not, his podcast. Yeah, it's not the best podcast. Yeah, yeah, he rambles a lot. I, I just don't like. <laughs> I just don't like even but, like a guy like that. I just don't like super negative podcasts like that. So, but it, it just comes off that way. But um, but but. I don't think it's a it's a it's a work. It's thing a conspiracy, Sorg. I don't think it's a conspiracy because he supposedly has canceled three personal appearances. This oh, week. he was going to do that anyways. Ah, he's like, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to go to Albuquerque. This is just an excuse to get him out of hey, it. Hey, Jay, give me a little bit of a bump out there while you're at it. Here's a here's a sure. Extra, why not? An extra case of barbecue sauce under the table, and uh, I, so I can stay home this week and watch like I guess OU football isn't happening, but uh, you know you get the idea. 
Tina said Ross could possibly go into a cor- a cornet rant mode tomorrow. He might. he might. They better check on him. They better check on him. It's gonna be. He might not be able to go into a cornet ramp if he has a broken rib. I could see him walking away from New Japan after something like that too. <laughs> like I, I could because I don't think he needs New Japan. I don't know if he walks away from it. I don't think he does any more live events. So he just does pre something. I mean, there, there's, or, there's, there's, or there's, at least he checks the guardrail before he starts compensating. I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> according to one of the reports I read earlier, apparently he had he has explicitly had a conversation with New Japan officials about nobody messing with the uh, commentary. Because you know, think about it, if you watch on uh, New Japan, there is there is a lot of fucking around with Kevin Kelly and uh, yeah. and uh, Cyrus mm-hmm. John Callis out there uh, during the shows. So I, I mean, he knows that he watches it right when he he does his voiceovers. He knows what happens there, so he very explicitly said, "Do not, you know, do, hey, don't 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 mess with me." And I think he might have even had something going into this. Um, so. Uh, that's that's on them and honestly he could he could really kind of uh, uh take a stab at new new japan for something like this uh, well then there's the other thing that happened yeah uh michael gary capetta who we, we chatted with uh just over a year ago here was coming back by the way to town uh yeah, i believe in october for his one-man show just throwing that out there so we went to the one last year it's a lot of fun so there's a gif of uh cody um not hitting the table, or at least not mostly hitting the table in the main event against Cam- Kenny Omega. He got some shoulder. He got some shoulder on that. A little bit, like uh. upper traps. Other, he got he got some trap. <laughs> is, like, is, is this trap like so trap? It was like right at the base of his neck that and gonna, his shoulders. That's going to save him from gravity. Jeez. Uh, um, basically, he, he, he tweeted that along with a uh, comment of, please stop doing this. Don't shorten your careers for something stupid like this, right? Um, which, I don't think that was supposed to happen, though. No, it wasn't supposed to happen. But still, it's uh, whenever you do a move like that, throwing somebody over the top rope and to a table. Honestly, that suplex was scarier than it was <laughs> than the table bomb. Wait, are you talking about the, the, the I'm talking one? Yeah, the suplex off of the top of the... F- Mm-hmm. 12 foot ladder that was on the edge of the ring that was on the edge of the ring yeah yeah kenny omega looked like he crapped his pants <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. like to be fair <laughs> to be fair that led into a match where he's taking big bumps kenny omega usually looks like he's crapping his pants that's, that's true kind of that's... his his thing <laughs> yeah no that that was that I mean, I'm was saying insane. that as a Kenny Omega fan by the way it's not a yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's Sorg is all there. about oh, Kenny I'm Omega crapping his pants I'm uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> that, was, what, that was a fortunate time go ahead what, what is it with New Japan tables not breaking though I thought that was maybe just a Japan thing but apparently it happens in the US too they look like I, such better tables too didn't they those, those tables in Japan are like corrugated cardboard though they're like those those tables are nothing and they're like half the size of a regular table. I don't. I don't really get it. Yeah. I, those I, things. Those things break really easily. Listen, they use tables differently. There, the one. Okay? The it's one. Just, it's just. It's just a cultural <laughs> thing that we don't understand because we're Westerners. Okay, and and just they just use tables differently. But they don't need the width because everything's bigger in America, right? Cody Including knows how to tables. use a table. Yeah, because he's, he. Yes, because he's learned a table language language of yeah. of that region. It was in San Francisco. <laughs> they used American tables. It was in San Francisco. Listen, there's a they lot went to of, Walmart there's a and lot bought a of table. Asian influence on the West Coast, California. I'm just saying, especially San Francisco. Yeah, especially San Francisco. I'm telling you, man. Have you ever been there? No. Well, there you go. There you go. You have no idea what their table culture is like. What? Exactly. What are we talking about? Exactly. Exactly. You know who would know? Who? The Dudley Boys. No? No. All right. Anyways, uh, Mac Harlan's, uh, I don't know what he's referring to here. Let's be real. Haramu was the scariest of all. What did Haramu do? Oh. Remind um, me. Are we talking about the broken neck? Or is that someone else? Yes. Okay, that was, he he was the one that faced that dude from CMLL, right? Uh, oh. I think so. Hold on. Honestly, all that shit that happened afterwards, I completely forgot about that match. Mm-hmm. 
Like I know he won, but I don't remember what what he did. Did he just like land on his face or something? Something like that. But it's just the West Coast in general. Oh, system. you know what it was? It was that um that sunset flip power bomb mm. where he just landed on his head. he got his head just like spiked right into the top. Right, of it. right, 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 right. Uh, Matt. So that is an official neck injury. I, I just found an article with an update on that injury. Um, and it looks like it was from a Phoenix Plex, Plex gone wrong from Dragon Lee. Uh, the report from the New Japan's website uh, was that he was taken to the hospital after the match. Um, he's in a state that he can sit and talk with consciousness, uh, according to them. This is an article from about a, day, about a day ago. So, Holy so crap. Yeah, no, he got, he got pretty messed up in that one. So I, it was something about this show. I don't know if it's just... It was just higher stakes, and we've talked about it. It seems like New Japan guys go at it, especially on these big shows, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So maybe you add a little bit of jet lag for half the roster, and, you know, this is what happens. So, But either way, I mean, it was... Obviously, everybody kind of went to town on this show, right? So uh, worth watching if you can grab it. Including... And they got to give it up for uh, Juice Robinson, you know, winning the U.S. Uh, title there. I mean, he bet on himself a couple years ago, mm -hmm. left the WWE, and you know, he he really did, you know, really did a lot for himself here. I think I, I'm, I think it's great. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and just the between the promos and that match, he's just oh, been yeah. incredible. <laughs> like I remember the first time, like I think it was one of the first Wrestle Kingdoms that I got to see. And he's he was a young boy getting knocked down on the on the outside, right? And uh, and now look at him. Now he's now he's shooting bald eagles out of his ass. Bald eagles out his ass, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Man, <laughs> jeez. Well, uh, from from San Francisco and New Japan to something uh, uh, that's a little smaller and a little a little interesting. Um, we we caught wind the uh, last night of something called Dojo Pro. You can watch this on Amazon Prime. You can buy episodes for like a dollar or two on Amazon if you don't have Prime. Um, it's, and I'll try to pull up the, the info here. Um, it's, uh, geez, it's, it, it, it's a tournament of sorts. It's a ladder. Think Mortal Kombat. You know, in Mortal Kombat, when you pick your character and you got to run through everybody to get to, you know, Goro and Shang Tsung. Yeah. yeah okay. Mm -hmm. So we know the concept, right? <laughs> I'm glad we got everybody on the same page. So in this it's that ladder system. They've ranked about 12 wrestlers. The wrestlers also do include like Jeff Cobb. James Storm is in there. Um, Joey Janela, the bad boy. Somebody that we've seen in IWC here recently. Same with Jeff Cobb. Uh, Shane Strickland, of course. Uh, Ricky Starks, we've, we've interviewed on this show a while ago with Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, down there in Texas. Uh, and a few other names that I don't, I, I haven't seen for a while. Look, can somebody please confirm me if Gunnar Miller is the gunner from uh, TNA? Uh, from a few years he ago, not. he is not okay. Uh, so, so it starts with two guys. They 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 fight. They get a white belt, championship belt, and they face the next guy on the ladder. And if they get beat, that person gets a belt. And the next, and the next, and the next. I've watched about two and a half episodes of this. Each episode is about twenty to twenty five minutes, and um, it, and, and 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 that's basically it, right? And you go on to the next one. All have been released on Amazon Prime. Um, it's kind of fun, a nice little studio show. But the nice little connection uh, is <laughs> is actually that a friend of our other podcast, the Awesome Cast, is the ring announcer of this uh, from here in Pittsburgh. So I'm loading the preview here um, because the first thing I saw, uh, if you see the Amazon for, version of this, you actually see a guy getting shoved, and that's uh, from the second episode. Our friend uh, Rob Johnson. Uh, that's uh, done a lot of work here in the area. And also, Vine superstar Rob on, Rob on the run when Vine was a thing. Just want to throw that out there, too. So it, it's a cool... It, it feels like... Oh, and it's the other thing. If you if you run through the ladder and get the Black Belt Championship at the end, you also get a shot at the Ring of Honor Television Championship. So there's actually a, you know... Legitimate prize. Legitimate, connected yeah. to somebody like Ring of Honor type of thing. You can tell it's a very small setup. The look feels very uh, Chikara slash Kaiju Big Battle for this, too. Um, cool concept. I'm kind of interested to see how it goes. It's like a super small Lucha Underground concept mm -hmm. almost, right? Yeah. 
And it's so. short, right? And Isn't it short. just like yeah. fifteen minute shows? Um, they're, twenty minutes. They're twenty minute ish. Yeah, so, the first, so the first one's a little longer because it introduces the concept. And yeah, talks about all the guys. Did but, they yeah. did they just dump the whole thing? Yep. in there at yep. once. Yeah, I think okay. it's uh, something like thirteen episodes. Twelve episodes. Twelve, 12 episodes. episodes, and then yeah. that's it. Cool. So, I don't know when you're going to do the the television championship or anything like that. I haven't seen who wins. I, I don't want to. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the other thing with spoilers, right? Like, they dump this out. Who's going to spend the whole six hours while well, wrestling fans? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, that's, that's like a short WrestleMania. It's, a, it's, a, it's like the thing you watch <laughs> instead of Raw. You know, you're good. Yeah. You know, that's your alternative. Finish right? it in two days. But also, like, interesting that Amazon Prime has taken on pro wrestling. Yeah. You know. Uh, well, I mean, they got to compete with Netflix with Glow. Yeah. That is and true. Lucha Underground. And they do have Lucha Underground. Not new, but still, there's like a very good. And there's even a Lucha Libre uh, documentary. It's been in my. Um, list to watch for a little bit here um so like there's been stuff like that uh, uh, netflix used to have wwe content like a lot of their video releases were on there for a little bit before the network started um they've had things like beyond the mat on there on netflix so and, and to and there's there is stuff on amazon prime but it, you know kind of random indie promotions and that have been able to get in on there yeah like i'm pretty sure if i push it i've actually looked into it and and I, the only thing I think holding me back from releasing some of the stuff we've worked on with IndieWrestling.us is actually going through and doing captions. Because they actually will not let you post anything that does not have captions. Hmm. Uh, it hmm. seems. At least the, the, the venues I was looking at there. But, of course, this was all interproduced from the looks of things. You know, this is an, an Amazon Prime original. You yeah. know, so uh, I don't know. What do you guys think of this kind of other uh, uh, angle on this? Um, I think it's a pretty cool concept. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm all for tournaments. Um, uh, you know, my Twitter handle is tourney master. So anything involving a tournament <laughs> is all cool with me. Um, I checked it out. I mean, I'm also all for anything. That's a little bit of a different spin on the traditional wrestling program. Mm-hmm. I'm a big Lucha underground fan. I'm a big Chikara fan. So I'm familiar with all these guys. Um, I think almost, I think more than half of them have Phil Singer games cards too, which I always like to say, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think it's really neat. I mean, something you can kind of you know, binge watch or kind of watch a little bit over time. You know, I, I'll, I watched the first one today. I thought it was a, a great presentation. Um, I think my my biggest uh, gripe with the, the presentation and uh, of like the whole studio there was, you know, that they had a great job on the, the little banners in the back for each guy, you know, with the little cartoons. And I thought the stage and everything was very cool, the entranceway. But why did they not have a ring skirt around the ring? That's the, <laughs> that bothered Thank me the you. entire show. Thank you. Uh, that bugged me too. They didn't have okay. a ring skirt. They that didn't have a ring little... skirt. It's just a bear, bear it's ring. It's a bear. You see underneath the ring. I'm like, when do you ever see that? Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. so much production put in all the rest of it, and that I don't know. That bugged me a little bit. But <laughs> I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. But is it a matter of? Is there a crowd in? Is there a crowd around it, or is this like an, it, it, an empty arena? It's a s- small crowd. If you've seen the like the Chikara Wrestle Factory, it's like yeah. that size yeah. crowd. It's so like three okay. rows, okay. two three rows. You can hear the person he's bantering with in the crowd, oh. like yeah. very explicitly. Like you can tell. Also, when they say stupid stuff in the ring, you hear everything, right? You know, if they're kind of you know trying to trash talk and it's coming off really weird, like it's. Um, it, it it also has a little bit of that reality show kind of mm-hmm. feel to it, right? Yeah, they're interviewing them before the matches. Like it's know. like it's like tough enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. only yeah. a tournament instead of yeah. Except there's actually wrestling around it, not yeah. not you know challenges. Yeah, you know? so um, it's it's kind of interesting. Um, I I'm, I, I, I want to try to get watch through the rest of it uh, uh, this week. I'll say I have about two and a half episodes uh, through. But um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 another it's another alternative out there, and something it could be a news in, good in for people uh, with Ring of Honor. Uh, being informed in the chat room too that Tina's saying Power Slam Wrestling Network is also on uh, Amazon as well as Defy Wrestling, PWG, Progress, Rockstar Pro, and CZW. Huh. So and I don't know how many of those are on Prime. Like I, you're, they might be just an on-demand thing. Um, but uh, but uh, definitely represented on there pretty well. Also, also Matt, go ahead. I'm saying also I kind of wonder 
because Am- since Amazon owns Twitch, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know how separate everyone is, or if it's a matter of someone on, on Amazon Prime knows, hey, there's all this indie wrestling on Twitch that's getting tons of views, <laughs> including right. indiewrestling.us, by the way. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And so why don't we get involved and just produce our own? That way we can make money off of it. Right. As right. Amazon Prime, instead of having, you know, and honestly, like you said, more wrestling, the better. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that you don't have to wait until um, Superstars comes on syndication <laughs> on an over air thing after Roller Derby anymore, trying to flip through the channels. And we just found out what era he watched wrestling as a child. (laughs) Hey, I'm a good Pittsburgher. I learned it because my grandma used to watch it. There you go. As you do, as you do, as you do. Myself, it was after the church programming on Sundays. Uh, So that was an interesting lead in, especially when we got to the Papa Shango era. But anyways, (laughs) uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, and one more thing about the uh, about the, the show there that I noticed uh, it was the referee. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know. I've only watched the first episode. I assume there's different referees in the, the, throughout the tournament, but, but there was a female referee there. Mm-hmm. And you know, with the popularity of red shoes in in New Japan, I think that pink shoes in Dojo Pro can really take <laughs> off. She she's not in the second episode. I want to point out, okay. but I also did love that the 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 the, the woman ref was taller than the wrestlers. Yes, I which I feel like is a thing most promotions would not allow to happen. Right, right. (laughs) (laughs) I did notice the same, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Except for uh, Walter Waite. Except for Walter Waite, yes. So Jessica Carr Carr is not that tall, though, so. Yeah, Yeah, but all the wrestlers are small. That's true, that's true. Oh, yeah, what, what, say Walter Waite or Cruiserweight? Walter Waite. Walter Waite, yeah. Yeah, those are tiny guys. But all awesome. And uh, check their stuff out. So uh, with that, speaking of wrestling, speaking of things getting out there, if you're looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank, you can advertise with us here on the Mayhem Show. We swear we won't tell anybody to kick your door down, Dave. Hey, no one says to do it. It just happens. It just happens. He sent us a picture one time of him like trying to kick the door down of the Slice on Broadway uh, uh, venue that had not opened yet, um, to which the owner responded <laughs> and said, hey, see you Monday. <laughs> uh, that's the kind of stuff that happens here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and you can be part of this and uh, talk to our network out there. Uh, for more information and details on our advertising plans, you can contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com today. We had a little chat with producer Missy over there, and we'll see what we can do. And uh, thank you, everybody, that does support the Mayhem Show and everything else over here at the Sorgatron Media Network. <laughs> Kick the door down, says Alex in the chat. We'll be back after this message with the big question, and we're going to talk to uh, Todd over here about what's going on uh, with a deep dive into Galacticon and what's the latest with Phil Singer Games uh, coming up here uh, right after this. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back here. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Larry on the couch. What's up? Dave Potter. Tiny hey. Shutter Podcast. Giving you a million plugs since we forgot to say that you were a Patreoner for a while. <laughs> also, uh, Todd from uh, Phil Singer Games joining us as hey. well. We're going to talk about Galacticon and what's up with you guys lately. Uh, lately, soon. Ah, oh, God, words. I need to drink more coffee. It's very this. Yeah, there you go. No, Missy, I don't want balls. Thank you. The drink. <laughs> uh, I, I want to give a quick shout out uh, for you guys on, on the visuals. Um, I got this uh, fun little uh, uh, gift from. They, they, I love. I love that we have friends that that shower us with wrestling gifts. Uh, if you saw the. Puzzle adventures um, from our Facebook Live Friday night. Still and, happening, by the is, way. Which is still We're we still, still have. There's puzzle. still a stack of about six pieces. We haven't figured out where they go on this thing. In the uh, circa 1986 Don Morocco uh, getting a headlock from Hulk Hogan horrible picture puzzle uh, that that our, we got from our friends at the Thrifty Podcast out here on the Sorgatron Media Network. 
But uh, Toddy was in yesterday, and uh, I think this is, I think, I think this is payment for attempting to help him with his computer issues. But here is a, it, it's, it's a pair of earbuds, a pair of Brahma Bull earbuds um, with the rock. And there's a little, I guess, I don't know if this, I guess, I guess it retracts into this, this, um, the rock image, like, like kind of situation here. Um, it's from WrestleMania. Huh. Let's see, Roman numerals uh, five, six, seven, twenty-eight. WrestleMania twenty-eight. Uh, so, which I think wasn't he the host that time? No, that was the Miami one. That was the Miami one. The first, the first scene because twenty-nine was in was uh, in New York. It was in New York. So, oh, so this is his first match against uh, John Cena then. Yeah. All right. Uh, once in a lifetime. Ah, uh, my <laughs> ass. So, uh, <laughs> ooh, oh, your ears. Once in a lifetime. Your Independence. Ears. Magnet, max input power. Oh, wait, this is, this is, I'm not reading the rest of the list. Okay, uh, but uh, wow. Also available is the Ultimate WWE Alarm Clock, Ultimate WWE Boombox, Ultimate WWE Walkie Talkies, and Ultimate WWE Headphones with John Cena as well feature. I don't think I'm going to open this because the headphones can't be that great. Um, and really, do I want to walk through the airport with Brahma Bulls coming out of my ears? Is yes. That, is that awkward? I think you do. But thank you to um, the Thrifty Podcast for uh, an awesome something else that will uh, decorate the studio here. Appreciate that. All right. But it is time for the big question. What is that? Are they bidding for it in the chat room? Is that what's happening? Maybe it'll be a prize. It could be a prize for Patreon in the future as well. We have people. So now we have people looking for prizes for Patreon. We give away the posters now. We got something special coming out. Um, probably about two months after the posters that uh, we've been sitting on for a while. Uh, so, but anyways, your big question this week. Answer in the chat room. Answer with uh, hashtag WMS big question at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, what is your favorite non traditional format wrestling show? We talked about a little bit. This Dojo Pro is something a little different, right? Lucha Underground's very different, and something we talk about a lot on this show. So I kind of, you know, is it a weird indie concept that's happening? Is it something that's happening on television? I think mostly these are going to be kind of indie wrestling concepts that you guys are going to be talking about here. Um, but uh, for me, uh, one that I never got to see too much of, but it's something I, ch- I chatted with um, the guys, and I think they're, oh, I think they're still running. These guys are Canadian, and they had a booth next to us, uh, WrestleMania 29 weekend when we did WrestleCon, uh, releasing uh, Montreal Theory with Joe Dombrowski. Um, but I had a, I had a good chat with Pinky Sanchez of uh, Chikara fame, and uh, they that's were, a wonderful name. Yeah, yeah, he used to be Pink Ant, um, and he was representing Interspecies Wrestling, who run in. Uh, let's see, their next show is at the next Knights of Columbus in Kahnawake, Quebec. So they're French Canadian and they're Interspecies Wrestling. <laughs> Way before there was intergender wrestling was the hot buzzword on the indies. Uh, Slamtasia 6 is what they're running up there. Uh, Interspeciallywrestling.com. It it was just kind of a fun side concept. Yeah, they're they're fun. Lots of animals, zombies, all sorts of things with those guys. Mm. They do a fun show. Yep. So, uh, yeah, and and, and I haven't seen too much since, but it it sticks in in the back of my head, you know, from that. So... Uh, Todd, I know you got something, and you said you were involved in something <laughs> very interesting, and I think I know where this is going. Okay, all right. So, you know, well before the times of Lucha Underground, and you know, kind of like the cinematic, you know, bring you know, and kind of off the wall um, concepts there. So, um, as you know, with Phil Singer Games, it started uh, about thirty years ago with Champions of the Galaxy. Um, so four years ago was the 25th anniversary or the 25th Galacticon. Uh, and we wanted to do something big. So uh, we did a Kickstarter campaign. Oh, I contributed to this Kickstarter. I remember now. <laughs> so we did a Kickstarter campaign and funded Champions of the Galaxy, the live event. And uh, I have a copy of the, the DVD right here. Oh. So um, in this, we, 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 we funded all of the costumes and we brought in guys like chuck taylor as our main villain uh orange cassidy was sober that day as our main uh <laughs> our main hero um 
We had uh, yeah, a number of other guys. Alex Reynolds was our big uh, other hero, Wolf. Um, and we recorded the whole thing and uh, cut it in with uh, special effects. So you can see some of the, the video there for the trailer. Uh, yeah, so it was basically like, uh, yeah, you can see the alien referee. Um, <laughs> we had a lot of fun. So just kind of bringing all the stars from the, you know, the 100 years of the future, bringing them into the current uh, time fates. Uh, just to kind of celebrate this uh, big anniversary for Phil Singer Games. And uh, to my knowledge, it is the only wrestling uh, Kickstarter, like live action Kickstarter to get funded and actually get rewarded back to the people who funded it. So we know of some ones in the past that got funded and never actually happened. Ours happened and went out to everybody. So yeah, that's, you know, one of my favorites, obviously. <laughs> That's amazing. I remember like we talked about this a lot on the show when it came up and we're just like, okay, it's a card game. We're gonna transfer it to wrestling. This is so great. <laughs> so great. Oh, check yeah, that so out. It was, so, it was so cool to happen. That was a, a life goal of mine was to somehow see Champions of the Galaxy on my TV screen. And <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and it happened. So it was it was really cool. That's awesome. Well, Larry, do you have anything? I know you have the other than New Japan. I know you don't deep dive in it. Kaiju Big Battle, man. There you go. There you go. Oh, there That's go. an easy one. Oof. I can't believe yep. it. we all missed it when it was in town last weekend. Unfortunately, Tart was did, did it's the a cart- hot ticket here in town. Yeah, they uh, sold out the. Sold um, out. Yeah, sold what out. was it? The was it the Biome or the Benedict? Well, I think it was the Biome this time, but they were at the August Wilson Center before. Yeah, that I one believe. sold out. That, that was a fun one. So they did sell out again. They had sippy cups full of bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Oh jeez! I got to watch the Carnegie Mellon take on Doctor Cube. <laughs> Oh, nice, nice. Oh, and see, and I've seen them between Pro Wrestling, National Pro Wrestling Day, and um, and uh, 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 at the they, Gathering of the Juggalos. Uh, that was fun. We, we did have one of the Kaiju monsters in our Champions of the Galaxy show as well. Oh, nice. which one? Uh, two core. And uh, Robert Evans was taking being a guy named Beast Rider, and he rode uh, two core around the ring, which was fantastic. <laughs> That's great. Wait, did I just see a Doink the Clown in this trailer from this? Uh, yeah, well, as part of the second half, we did a kind of, we, we did with the local promoter there, kind of like a more, you know, real life wrestling. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he brought in a Doink the Clown. And he was part of a match we did between, it was a 24 7 hardcore championship match between Chuck Taylor and Stevie Richards. We're uh, doing the clown to get involved in that, and um, because why not indie wrestling? Yeah, because why not? It completely <laughs> messed it up, and did like the completely messed up. Took the Stevie kick and did not sell it at all, oh. and it goes down in the lore of Galacticon history. <laughs> Anytime anyone messes it up, we call it doinking it. So. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing, Kaiju Dave. I know you said you're more traditional <sighs> in your, you're more regular in your in your in your wrestling watch but is there anything kind of alternative that you're kind of digging into you maybe caught on the indies that one time uh, to be honest i'm going to be the equivalent of the guy you asked for an italian restaurant and he says oh you mean like the olive garden <laughs> <laughs> um like the it. only thing i could think of kind of like alternative different again uh, part part of this is not having cable till i went off to college so this is just trying to get whatever broadcast i could uh, growing up and not, you know, having the expansive knowledge, but thinking about something different would just look maybe not exactly what we're going for, but the brawl for all where it was, you know, Hey, let's have a real fight and see what happens. And then you saw it and you were like, yeah, these guys can't fight real good or it doesn't look good. Hey, when they fight. leave bark gun alone. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting started with the bark gun Larry well, that, that no, man's, pr- that man's Larry. protected I'm not talking about the, the butterbean final match I'm talking about all, everything building up to it it's it. <laughs> hmm. I mean it was like hey let's try something different and it was like yeah let's not try that ever again or even mention <laughs> it even exist yeah <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's fun hearing that brought, that concept brought up on the Pritchard podcast often. That is probably the most crapped on concept by him. Um, I, I'm trying to find one. I, I've talked about it back on the show that I experienced in Detroit. Uh, I'm trying to catch the name of it. If anybody uh, recalls what the circus wrestling uh, happened to catch years ago in Detroit might be. 
Um, uh, it's not like Wrestle Circus pre before Wrestle Circus. It was a, uh, but it, it was fun because uh, it was it, again. I've talked about this on the show before. Uh, Zach Gowan was Pogo the Wonder Boy. Uh, I believe Ophidian and and uh, uh, the Funky Pharaoh were pretty much themselves from Shikara, but there was a. Uh, the the bro bot uh that was part of that you know a caveman and then they had like a snake charmer in between and it was always interesting because they said that these aren't wrestling fans these are like you know just non-wrestling fan hipsters that just want to see a cool show and it's like at an old art gallery in a rundown part of detroit that's probably been gentrified by now i'm sure but uh (laughs) things are going up there i guess but uh and it, there's a couple, there's a couple me. of those concepts with like, yeah. like the um, you know like the the, the burlesque dancers and yeah. the comedians yeah. kind of like Lucha Bavoon does it. There's one out yep. in Colorado, I, I think up in Minnesota. First Wrestling does a kind of concept like that now too. I think they're doing some stuff with the Chikara at the Wrestle Factory with like a Fidian's wife or something. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Producer Missy, uh, your attention has been. A night at the bazaar. A night. Square Circle Review. I think that's it. Hmm. Circle review. I'll take a peek at that and see if that's it. But from the chat room, in the meantime, while I'm investigating that, uh, Wow Wrestling that's going to Access TV. Wait, was it not? Wait, women? Is it Women of Wrestling? Is it w- yeah, it's a women's concept. Is it? Is it not the old one that was basically porn pay per views, right? No. That I picked <laughs> up for. One. Is this the same one? Because there's one of these that was like those. Uh, you buy the DVDs. <laughs> You buy the DVDs at Walmart that there's like, you know, eight shows for, for five dollars kind of things, like the old westerns you can get on there, right? Um, oh no, this is something completely different. Wow. Oh, is Santana Garrett's a part of this? This is gonna be on Access? Apparently. Um yeah. I don't know, they have a season four. So there you go. Four Look. seasons? They're four seasons. Yeah, in. They're, they're doing they're doing seasons. This is superheroes. They're listed as superheroes on here. Uh Santana Garrett, Atlanta Star. Uh, Jungle Girl. Look, wait, wait, wait. You got your prison tag team, Caged Heat. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this is this looks like a more legit version of something that was also called out in the chat room uh, from Remedy that we also always had a fun here on the show with uh, Wrestlelicious. Wait, is that Jesse? Wait, wait, that that's Jesse Smothers. The Jesse Jones on here. Yeah. Looks like so that is worth looking into. I'm gonna have to bookmark that for later. Um, also, JCW Juggalo Championship Wrestling is definitely a little different. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with that here in a couple weeks. I'll be out there for the gathering. Um, Ladies of Burlesque was a, a thing at the Wrestle Factory. Gorgeous Ladies of Bur- Burlesque, uh, Cars is saying. I think you might have mentioned that. Um, There's another one you can find on Smart Mark called Totally Tool Wrestling. Um, it was out of uh, the Eagles Club in Berwyn, uh, oh, and about ten years ago or so. That one sounded pretty neat too. Totally tool. Totally tool. When is that even? Where do they, so what were they doing with it? Oh, it was all sorts of weird concepts. I think it was. Uh, well, we got some not, videos. Got some it was uh, run by Joey Eastman. If you're familiar with him. Oh, there's some Larry seen. Scen- I don't know. I just turned into a Larry Sweeney versus Space Ghost. Uh, so yep. you've won oh, me over. Match between the Iron Sheik and Larry Sweeney in there. This looks. This will, it looks like cartoon wrestling. That's. I don't yep. know. The referee is blind. I think that might be oh, Bryce yes. Remsburg. Um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, Just Incredible was involved, by the way. <laughs> and everything's on fast motion for some reason. The lesser known video. Basham. The lesser what? Who? Just incredible. Just incredible is a lesser known Basham. Yeah, I don't think that's. What, I think he's okay. A- any that. anybody that's bald with a beard is a Basham. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Old wrestling. Oldie wrestling. Um, oh, they just oh. had a show. Man, I really want to see one of those. Um, so they have their uh, extravaganza coming up uh, at the end of the summer. Jeez. Episode eight of Glow on Netflix is getting called out. <laughs> That was a good episode. Yeah, that's what I hear. I, I got, still need to get to that episode. one. So, um, so lots of alternatives. So, thanks everybody for your. <laughs> hope you guys discovered uh, something out there. Um, what was squared squared circle review? Double check in life and death of pro wrestling. No, this is something else. Uh, unless a documentary. But I, yeah, no, I think this is it. Squared circle review, and it looks like they might still be running up there in Detroit. Well, they had something in April. It looks like. 
So that's worthwhile to check out too if you're in the Detroit area, or if Aaron's going or Larry's going back home Friday to the home world and see some weird wrestling. There you go. Yep. I don't know. Is, is Rhino? Rhino's not still running that Fed up there, right? Rhino's the living BFWs. on a houseboat now. He's man. living on a houseboat. <laughs> yeah, he loves his boat. That's the. I've had two conversations with Rhino. One was about germs, and the other was about owning a boat. So, all right. Anyways, on with the show, and then let, let us know if there's any, any other crazy, weird stuff out there. We really appreciate it. Speaking of, this is appropriate. Pro wrestling is a wild and crazy art form, if you couldn't tell by the last 10 minutes. Uh, And Occupy Pro Wrestling is here to look at what makes it fun, featuring articles, blogs, and a podcast that uh, brings you interviews with fellow fans. Occupy Pro Wrestling is uh, putting the smart back into smart mark. You can check it out at OccupyProWrestling.com. Say hi to our friends over there supporting this show and the other shows here on uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, and the MFX podcast and a whole bunch of other fun stuff going on there. A great source for your wrestling news and info. So go check them out. OccupyProWrestling.com. And check out his merch. He's got some cool stuff over on uh, WhatAManeuver.net.com. Uh, what a maneuver. You know what it is. You guys are wrestling fans. You got it. Uh, <laughs> um, let's, uh, will I bring up the fact that Todd was on that show? What show were you on, Todd? Did I, did I mention something that you were a part of? The uh, Champions of the Galaxy Live event thing, or uh, I think that I don't remember. There's another one that I, I mentioned. On Alex's Alex's oh, podcast. Were you on? The, were you on the the the, the Occupy Pro Wrestling Power of the Smarks or uh, Chikara and Fifteen by chance? Yes, I was. There yeah. you go. Yeah. There you go. That's that another was. one that he does. <laughs> yes. There you go. Full circle here uh, on the Mayhem Show. And Remedy is judging my number of tabs. I was looking up all the promotions we were just talking about, Remedy. I'm trying to keep up with the content, sir. This is how we operate. And this is why I have a producer to do other things. Oh, boy. Uh, So coming up this weekend here in Pittsburgh, Galacticon. And, of course, if you guys are not in Pittsburgh, a lot of great stuff uh, Phil Singer Games have been doing, including pro wrestling shows for <laughs> in uh, well that was jamestown new york wasn't it yeah it was in jamestown that's where we've done most of the conventions but yeah we've had a couple outside outside of jamestown that's awesome recently so tell me uh you know you guys a uh, big wrestling weekend here in pittsburgh i think we we're talking about a little on the break uh with extreme rules iwc is having a crazy show with threat level midnight that saturday night as well um and then you guys are doing galacticon right down the road from iwc and elizabeth which is right down the road from pittsburgh down 51 um there's a sheets on the way i will qualify that uh so so tell us what do you got what what are people going to expect from galacticon uh yeah so galacticon um yeah it's it's our you know once a once a summer convention there so what we have uh you know we do all of our new game releases there which I'll, i'll show you a couple of those in a little bit um, but we also do a number of different uh, game tournaments. So we have ones around Champions of the Galaxy, one uh, around our Legends of Wrestling, which is a uh, historical uh, f- figures in wrestling, uh, kind of big top guys from the, from the past, like uh, anyone from like Buddy Rogers and Harley Race, uh, Road Warriors, guys like that. Uh, and then we do uh, indie wrestling uh, tournaments as well. So we have uh, games for Ring of Honor, uh, Evolve, Chikara, uh, and a number of other indie wrestling uh, promotions. So uh, we have uh, tournaments that people can join in uh, with all those. Uh, there's free giveaways in terms of uh, exclusive cards. And um, we have an auction with uh, kind of rare items, including original game art and other different things like that. Uh, prizes for you know, winning tournaments and uh uh, other things, uh, a Q and A with uh, Tom Filsinger, kind of ask you know, ask him anything you want to know about you know what you know the new games that came out, what things are, are upcoming, things like that. So uh, we have a lot of fun. It's uh, both Saturday and Sunday at the West Meeting Center in uh, West Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. There you go. Um, I, I didn't realize that you know this has gotten this big that you guys are running your own cons all over. All over the, uh, at least the Northeast here. This is something you've done multiple places, right? Yeah. So, I mean, most, you know, the first uh, 25 we did in in, uh, Jamestown. Yeah, that's where uh, Tom was living. And then uh, the last couple of years, we kind of moved it around. We did, uh, 
one year we went to Cleveland and uh, did it as actually part of Wrestling Geek Fest. If anybody had uh, heard of that, yeah, for a year. yeah, yeah, we we were hearing about that. Was that last year or a it, years no? Ago? That was uh, I guess like three years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, we we partnered up with uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling. They ran uh, a Battle of the Sexes show on Friday. We did another show on Saturday and had a, you know, a bunch of different stuff at the convention over the course of the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we did, uh, we did one in Philly a couple of years ago and back to Jamestown. And then, you know, we have a lot of people who are game fans who are in the Ohio and, uh, you know, Southern New York, Western Pennsylvania area. So we thought, you know, what better place than Pittsburgh? And, uh, you know, we picked the weekend and it just happened to work out to be extreme rules weekend and, you know, everything else going on in town. Uh, we did talk with IWC, you know, when we were trying to figure out the weekend, making sure they were going to run because we wanted to uh, have something on the Saturday night for all of us to go to. So uh, we will be uh, there and uh, I'll show it off now. We will have an exclusive uh, card uh, for uh, Andrew right. Palace yeah. uh, that we'll have uh, during the show there. So uh, you can either come to the convention and get the, get one of these for free, or we'll actually have them at the IWC show as well. So uh yeah, you know, check us out there. We'll have our our table selling some stuff as well, and you can try out the game if you're coming out to the out to the show that night. That's if awesome. You can't make it to convention. I, I want to roll back a little bit for maybe the people that are new to Phil Singer Games sure. a bit. So you guys, again, you guys have uh, you know if you saw on the site earlier, you guys are involved with Ring of Honor, Jakar Pro. You yeah. know a lot of great art uh, for a lot of these. You know, um, you know, talking a little bit about like that that kind of. You know, you've kind of had this this thing with Champions of the Galaxy, and then crossover into this wrestling world with it as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah, we oh we, well we we started with the Champions of the Galaxy game that started in 1986. Uh, yeah. Tom Filsinger started, and you know the the black and white cards. You probably saw the advertisements in uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated back in the uh, the 80s and early 90s, and that's where I became a fan then. Um, as it was back in 91 and uh you know eventually i think in um early 2000s uh we started getting into legends so uh we had you know first legends of wrestling kind of old school guys and then once i kind of came aboard i was like well we have the guys from the past what about guys who are up and coming these mm-hmm. seem like a good you know we can't obviously you know, we, you know Hopefully one day we'll have a WWE game, but uh, <laughs> we want to uh, at least you know get you know get into to the guys who might work their way into WWE. And um, yeah, so we started uh, first with Chikara because I'm a big Chikara fan, and it just seemed like a natural progression, you know, from Champions of the Galaxy. You know, Chikara kind of seemed like a natural fit, uh, but it did well. And then you know, we reached out to Ring of Honor, and now we've done stuff with a whole bunch of different indie feds. So I mean, almost every major indie wrestler uh we we've we've done cards for over the course of the last five years or so Mm -hmm. and uh i mean if you're not familiar with the game it's um it's a it's a you know card you have a a card for each individual wrestler has their offense defense uh you have some charts uh that you know might you know give you some stuff in case you like you go out of the ring or throw a guy into the ropes you have uh special instructions for that and basically just with the cards and a couple dice you can um either play out a match against somebody else. You can roll a match by yourself and kind of create your own promotion. I mean, that's what I've been doing since 91. I have an ongoing storyline in my fed that's been, uh, been playing out since then. But, uh, you know, whatever, whatever style that you like, whether it's kind of like the old school, like, you know, your old school seventies, eighties fan, you get the legends, you're kind of in more into indie scene. You got that. You're cool with the sci-fi uh, stuff. You know, champions of the galaxy is, uh, is the way. So uh, we, you know, we'll represent all of them this weekend in uh, Ecolacticon. It's an awesome, it's an awesome lineup, and, I, and a lot of great artwork uh, too for a lot of these guys. Uh, that say this is a CZW stack I just pulled up there uh, yeah. on the on the on the uh, Google Images, and uh, a lot of guys from Ring of Honor. It's been pretty, it's pretty cool to see them. I, I know when the artwork pops up in my uh, feed, it's, it's really fun to see those. So. Yeah, one of the uh, sets we're releasing. Uh, so a couple things we're releasing this weekend. We have uh, for the legends. We have uh, uh, the Valiant brothers, uh, Johnny and Jimmy Valiant. Um, so representing, uh, you know, a little bit of Pittsburgh there with uh, with Johnny. Uh, we want to do something to tribute. He was actually a former guest at a Galacticon uh, up in New York. So uh, we definitely want to do something with him. Uh, we have our new uh, Champions of the Galaxy set that's coming out, um, which I have uh, the booklet for here. I can't show the artwork because 
it's still under under wraps by Tom's orders. So <laughs> can't show all that. But uh, but the other big thing that we're doing is our uh, UK set. Uh, so uh, some of the guys that we're releasing from there, like um, Pete Dune. We have uh, Zack Saber Juniors in this one. Uh, we have the recent uh, NXT Tag Team Champions, uh, Mustache Mountain, as well. So, uh, nice. you know, all these guys agreed to be in the game and, uh, you know, luckily, uh, you know, I don't know if we'd be able to sign them right now, but, uh, we're, they're luckily they, uh, they're part of this game and we're good to, to release them. So we have, uh, some really cool guys out there and, you know, we just, uh, released some sets recently for Evolve. We had, which had Walter in it and a few other guys. Um, but, uh, we have new stuff coming out all the time and this weekend's going to be a big one for it. That's awesome. And it's cool to see that roster growing. Um, Kind of a, a technical question here because I know there was like controversy like a couple of years ago about um, like guys signing deals personally. Like I think there might have been some action figure lines that are happening, you know, and then they get signed up for WWE and that was like an issue. Like is that is that something you guys run into? Of course, legally, if you can't say anything, that's fine. But uh, like it, it seems like a thing. Like holy crap, you have these guys that are like completely, you know, on the UK tournament and things like that. You know, um, it's like just kind of you guys sign in and you're fortunate that they kind of roll on into the big leagues there. Uh, yeah, I guess for the most part, yeah. I mean, there hasn't been anything yeah i mean we we were we'd signed up before they got signed with wwe i know there was the action figure thing i know wwe that's a big uh Mm -hmm. big thing for them i don't think the card game is necessarily as big of a an issue there but uh yeah yeah, i don't see a wwe card game i'm just saying uh (laughs) no no, it's definitely not not one like this no 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 so uh, that's maybe awesome. One, maybe one day we'll see. Maybe we'll see. one day. I'm, I'm, I'm close by Stanford, so if they ever want to call me in uh, you know, to, to talk about that, I'm happy to do so. Well, maybe we have some people up there. We can have a uh, slip your number too. Uh, okay. But <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So uh, if people want to find out information about the con this uh, weekend, or if they're anywhere else, because we... oh wait, I'm sorry, we have a question I want to... before we get to that. Uh, Alex Miller out there in California is asking if uh, Travis Banks is in, and of course somebody made a uh, pretty big splash lately. Uh yeah, actually we do have. Here it is, right here. Yeah, Travis Boom. Banks card. Boom! There you go. There and is. also another guy who I I thought was great recently, uh, Flash Morgan Webster. Oh, I like this art. This art turned out really good. I that's really that cool. Good. That is really yeah. cool. And again, somebody that really stuck out as a, a pleasant surprise on that last UK tournament. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, no, we we got a lot of the good guys, a lot of really cool guys there. Um, you know, that a lot of them have been through PWG and stuff mm-hmm. in recent years. Mm-hmm. So, um, and uh, glad to glad to see that they're getting a good shot on a bigger stage. There, some real talent over there. So, I'm awesome. really happy to see that. Well, where can people find out more information? Maybe pick up some cards or get some more information on the event this weekend if they're in the area. I definitely highly recommend it since IWC is looking crazy with uh, Bruce Pritchard and I think <laughs> Shane Taylor's still a part of it this weekend. Shane Taylor's and... still in there, yeah. Okay, yep, yes, yep. I know Jeff Cobb couldn't make it from the sounds of it. Uh, Unfortunately, but yeah. uh, but just an insane card that they're putting together there, and lots of friends of the shows a part of that. Well, as well, oh. where can people get info on what you guys are doing? Uh, best place to go for us is PhilSugarGames.com. You can find the link uh, along the top to uh, Galacticon 2018. Uh, it's also, you can probably find the link off the main page as well. It's got all the information there. We got, um, I see, a Saturday 10 to 6, and then we also have Sunday 10 to 2, kind of uh, wrapping up everything with the convention. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, everything, all the information and uh, our schedule events and stuff like that, you can download that as well uh, right off the website. That's awesome. And uh, we should be there, at least uh, one or two of us from the Wrestling Mayhem Show representing. Uh, we will we'll be swinging in before the IWC show because we'll, of course, be involved with the production with that as usual. Uh, so looking forward to see uh, what, what goes on at these things uh, finally. So, you know, especially after seeing what, what went down at the <laughs> Champions of the Galaxy event. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so go check it out. And thank you so much for uh, coming on and joining us and, uh, and uh, you know, shooting the shit about wrestling tonight. Uh, absolutely yeah definitely follow if you follow us on twitter uh at phil singer games we release art almost every monday mm-hmm. always some cool stuff from our, our artist warner movie awesome so uh and with that and i think this is updated right missy yes. all right so uh hey fourth of july just passed but you know, let's celebrate America Month, and uh, we're celebrating that over at IndieWrestling.us uh, with buy one get one offer on the uh, digital download products. This is of course the old digital downloads 
that we have, the, the big back catalog in uh, for you guys over at Indie Wrestling. Uh, dot us there buy one get one uh that's all it goes all the way back a lot of the guys that we've talked about are on here elias is logan shulo uh cory gray is a sterling james keenan uh, a few of those guys that she held cards up for including andrew palace is part of there jeff dune is represented on indie wrestling.us you go do search uh, search for that and go check out that buy one get one on digital downloads and of course please go check out the brand new uh, we just started rolling some titles out, and we'll be uh, pulling in the back catalog as well here as we go. Um, if you go to the uh, video on demand uh, link, you can rent or buy the newer titles uh, via Vimeo. And if you have the Vimeo app on your device or phone or whatever the case, you can actually watch uh, on your television now all the indie wrestling releases lately, including World of Weight Wrestling 3. Uh, the latest, uh, well, actually, there's a new premiere show going to be posted here very soon. Uh, Stomp Out Cancer 2, Rise Wrestling, IWC, including this threat level midnight, will be uh, up there in, uh, in mere days after it's, maybe even hours, after the event is finished. Um, so uh, uh, that's something that you can go uh, check out. Support indie wrestling, support Phil Singer Games, and uh, support everybody involved. Here, so uh, they can keep making cool shit, and maybe some of these guys you'll see on Raw someday, like the guys that are going to be here in Pittsburgh on Sunday. So, all right, with that, it's time to learn. What did you learn from wrestling this week, Dave Podner? Well, I learned that WWE has no idea what to do with Indian wrestlers. Oh no! After after seeing um, going from the angry Indian. Um, now we're doing the, um, gender doing the, um, Namaste. meditating, yeah. yes, the, 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 meditating, um, yogi almost trying to have Seth Rollins find his inner peace all of a sudden. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe if I have some, uh, a jacked up guy who's six foot, wherever you want to call him, six foot six, six foot seven looking, I, I think someone could think of something better to do with them, even limited. But hey, I'm not, I didn't get a billion dollars from Fox and USA <laughs> Network for my TV show. So obviously, I'm an idiot. There's no problem here. There's no problem. I mean, we're just on a mildly successful podcast that's been running for 12 years, and Vince got $12 million. Uh, <laughs> well, who, are, who are we to, to say? Right. I mean, that's kind of like the qualification. Like, like every conversation is, God, this sucks. I don't understand why anybody watches this. I don't, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then there's that billion dollar mic uh, mark for the B show. But we did win the Tuesday Night War. So there's that because it's moving. <laughs> we to did because it's moving the Fridays. Mm -hmm. Take that, SmackDown Mayhem takes it to you. There you go. That's what I learned this week. <laughs> Larry. Um, shit. Um, I don't know. I. What'd you learn from New Japan? I learned that the, the Tongans are ready for a fight. Did you think <laughs> in 2018 you were gonna watch the end of a show where Haku <laughs> is in the middle of the biggest new heel faction? He is the Paul Ellering of New Japan Pro Wrestling. The Paul Ellering. <laughs> I need to process that. I need to process that. But they're calling themselves Firing Squad. You know, it's the BC on the shirts, yep. too. Um, still Bullet Club. You know, I still feel like... It's like, Bullet Club Civil War. It's Bullet Club Civil War. That's what it is. Whoa. Yeah. Well, 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 well wait a minute. Wait a minute. Or was Bullet Club Civil so Because really, you look at it. Cody and Kenny were the Bullet Club Civil War. They made up. This, no, this up. is the this is Bullet Club Civil now, War. Now it's the rest of them. Yeah. So this is like the Secret War crossover that happened after the Civil War crossover. Secret mm. Tongan War. Yes. Yes. Sure. Book it. There you go. It's happening. <laughs> Todd, what did you learn from wrestling this week? <laughs> well, uh, this past Sunday, I went to a WWE house show in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Okay. And, uh, you know, there was a great, you know, triple threat between Seth Rollins and uh, Dolph Ziggler and Finn Balor. Uh, there was a, you know, Ronda Rousey was there and all, wow. and, you know, lots of great stuff going wait, on. Wait, wait, Ronda Rousey was in Bridgeport? Uh, yeah, I, 
I don't know what happened to the 30 day suspension, but yeah, uh, but no, she was wrestling. In I'm Bridgeport. gonna say yeah. she's suspended from Raw. She's not suspended yeah. from yeah. live not from, events. Not from, not from house shows, apparently. Not, not from house MSG shows. Either. Okay, okay. Uh, but, uh, but I learned, and I brought my son, my seven year old son, and his friend there, and I learned that seven year old boys love Roman Reigns. <laughs> That's what I learned. They're the yeah. only ones. Yeah, all yeah. this great stuff. Their favorite thing was Roman Reigns. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he looks mm-hmm. like a superhero. He does. I mean, he does. What can you do? What can you do? What can you, you try to teach him, but uh, what are you going to do? You know who else looks like a superhero mm. and has way better, uh, well, everything? The wrestlers at the uh, Champions of the Galaxy live wrestling show? Well, them. Because <laughs> they also, did look like, they literally look like superheroes. I was going to yes. say Tomatonga. <laughs> Tomatonga. <laughs> <laughs> There's your Samoan War right yes. there, man. They're related. I want to see. Are they t- related? Is Haku related to that side of the family? I think so. so. I yeah, mean, related I think so. No, I think he's related to the Rock. Like it's so. everybody except Samoa Joe, right? Right. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Samoan Joe. <laughs> she just call him Samoan Joe. <laughs> I might have. I could need some more coffee. <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, what did I learn from wrestling this week? Um, oh shit! There was a lot that happened on that show on Saturday <laughs> night. Um, I learned, I learned that uh, <laughs> the greatest thing is when the announcer has a TV and a recorder on his table and absolutely believes that the people in the last man st- man standing match are definitely going to suplex it, the, each other into the table. <laughs> Jim LaMotta, I have to give you a shout out. Those poor soul that was trying to save my recorder during Stomp Out Cancer a couple weeks ago, and you hear it on the commentary. I was kind of kind of laughing. I appreciate it. He saved my $200 recorder uh, about three times during that show. But then then gets his first showing as a commentator at Rise Wrestling, Rise with a Y, wrestling this past weekend, and then gets as if as if they knew that... <laughs> Uh, you, you hear him saying, no, man, there's a TV. No, don't do it. Don't do it. It's the clip I used on the internet. You can go check it out. Two minutes of wrestling. Uh, Christian Noir and Dalton Throttle over the Indie Wrestling US uh, uh, YouTube page. And it's 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 pretty fun. Uh, uh, Jim, great announcer. Uh, but, man, I had so much fun listening to you freak out on the live switch for that one up in the booth uh so that's that's what i learned this this weekend definitely uh, that and do not fuck with jr when josh burnett's around holy that shit. can josh burnett that. just be like jr's like diesel he is i mean he is like he was he's, he's just he's it's jr's like, he's... it's like you punched his granddad in the face he's right in front of him damn damn he done fucked up he done fucked up Switchblade don't care. Well, he kind of he kind of did. I mean, if you think about it, most most people watching wrestling, JR's kind of grandpa. He's untouchable. He's one of the no, untouchable. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He's up there with Corey Graves. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, he's untouchable. Yeah, he's, he's untouchable. Roll, you can't touch him. Can't even pancake him. No, no pat on the back. Nothing. Are we gonna get like booty pancakes like? mix at fye soon is that what's gonna happen uh, you think what because i mean we moved from cereal to pancakes with the new day i was thinking about this last this week. is a weird tangent where are well, you going know, just, and ice cream in between yeah and then ice cream well, yeah, that ice cream thing i think they're just like moving for merchandising going through the food groups you know it's like the when food cereal, groups yeah. ice cream pancakes ice cream and pancakes cereal? cereal yeah absolutely that, that three, represents three food groups uh at least to it's the, the Triforce th- of Foods. It, it is. It is. Especially when you're on the road as a wrestler, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it's like when CM Punk wanted to bring back the ice cream bars. I yeah. was out of wrestling for the entire CM Punk run. Oh, oh. you missed some gold there, man. Wheels learned oh, right. that uh, a lot from Marshall Gambino Saturday night. Can't wait till I edit that show. And Marshall Gambino is going to be defending his high stakes uh, championship. Against Ginger. Isn't that the hardcore title? It's kind of the whatever title. Yes, in a dog collar match. That's oh, not with Chess Flexor. Chess Flexor's wife, Ginger. And has Ginger ever wrestled? Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. 
Yeah. You know what? I'm going with Ginger to win. Ginger for the win. I can't wait yeah. for Ginger to be a yeah. high stakes champion. She's gonna she's gonna tie Gambino to a lamp post. It's something he's got. She's got all the STDs behind her. So sexy, talented dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Just I heard that over there. <laughs> Can't touch ginger. Oh boy! No, you can't. You can't touch it. Yeah, those STDs will get you. I love you, Ginger. Oh, never mind. We're it's stopping okay. that now. It's okay. We're it's stopping okay. this now. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck in your match. We'll be there. We'll be there cheering you on. Um, Matt Carlin says I learned glow spoilers. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for that. Alex Miller learned that uh, we found out the first two leaders of the of their tribes, two leaders of their tribes. Oh, of uh, Lucha Underground. What did I miss something? The tokens. The tokens. What? Well, what? Don't spoil it for anyone. It's did fun. it? It's with Lucha. Yeah. Did something happen since that last episode? No, that was the last. episode. That was the last episode. <laughs> Don't, don't spoil anything more. They pulled it from uh, Sling TV, so I didn't get to watch. That oh episode. shit! Well, we're oh, done. We're shit. done talking. <laughs> Sling <laughs> spoilers. Well, yeah, well, you can find out what the hell that's about on the Mayhem Underground podcast that we'll record here later this week. Anyways, our last week's episode, I guess, is already up. And also, do 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 do. Wheels learned that. We did that part. Uh, Pete learned that SmackDown equals Ellsworth. Yes. Mm. And uh, Remedy learned that Alexa Bliss may have gotten implants again. Again. She's so tiny. If she got implants, I think she'd fall over. <laughs> it fit in my oh. pocket. Hey, Sork. Hmm. I just remembered one other thing I, I learned this past week. What's that? If you want to find a universal champion. <laughs> <laughs> you don't necessarily have to look. Nope. Where other WWE people are. No, no. <laughs> No, you have to say his name in an octagon three times and he'll appear. Just once? Apparently, yes. <laughs> just just once. once. Apparently, just it once. once. Well, I wasn't ready for that. Larry got really close to the camera. Hello. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's okay. I've been sitting here a long time. I'm antsy. I'm ready he's to leave. He's readjusting. He's, he's done with this. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. I'm done with it, too. Thank you so much, Todd, for joining us here. Please check out Galacticon and Phil Sunger Games. Thank you for having me. There you go. Great stuff happening over there. Dave Podner, Tiny Shutter Podcast. If you haven't heard it enough during this show. No, you can't hear it enough, to be honest. There and you go. <laughs> even though we do say iPhone photography, we are we are always welcoming people. If you do have Android, for whatever reason, uh, we do welcome you. If you want to listen to the podcast, uh, view the website at tinyshutter.com or find our group on Facebook where people post simply amazing photos they, pick, they take with their... Literally, you think these people took this with a cell phone. They are so amazing. It's awesome. It's good stuff. I got the uh, the the eight plus and jeez, <laughs> the upgrade when I took stuff. Like it's cool because I'm going to the same as as we talked about uh, since we have kind of a uh, business relationship here uh, uh, with our companies. But uh, uh, taking the pictures at the same events I did the year before is like eye opening, right? You know, it, it's it's pretty cool. Um, and Larry, you have a thing to plug. Yeah, you do. Do I? That thing that gets me high every night. Oh, the p- spray paint. Yeah, the spray paint. Oh, if you need any. Where do you do that? If you in need... the basement. Yes. If you if you need if you <laughs> <laughs> microphone's falling down. Sorry, no, Larry's uh, sleep deprived. Um. Yeah, if you need any scenic design, uh, prop fabrication, or uh, display pieces, uh, go to darkforgestudios.co and uh, just email me there. There you go. Spray paint some stuff, too. Don't knock on his door because he's not always there. Yeah, I'm not always there. We have signs to direct you if you show up here, but don't. He's not. He just hot hours and if you try and kick the door down just know that there's a really really efficient deadbolt so you'll probably <laughs> hurt your foot <laughs> there you go dave sorgatron <laughs> dave sorgatron media <laughs> on uh dot com and check out all the fantastic shows we have going on and uh of course next week we will be live not the week after next week we're gonna have rob johnson the announcer that got shoved in 
Dojo Pro uh, on Amazon Prime. It'll be uh, chatting with us about what's going on there and hang out with us and talking wrestling as well. And also, uh, the week after that, no live show. We'll be releasing Impact Therapy 2 with Shirley Doe and Mad Mike. And that'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, our chat room. You guys are going strong all night, and we really do appreciate it. Uh, so until next time, Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.